Hi guys, you are looking at the BMW M2 competition. So this is the second uh, refresh or update or upgrade, if you like, of the BMW M2. Now the M2 uh, first arrived in Malaysia back in 2016. That time, uh, it was priced at about 500 ringgit lah. Today, this M2 competition here, the price is, wait for it, ah, 626,800 ringgit. Yeah, 127,000 uh, in price increase, okay? Uh, but what are you paying for? Well, for one, you are paying for a depreciating ringgit. For another, you are also paying for a new engine. This engine here, a 3 liter inline 6, uh, this is from the BMW M3, M4. Now it's thrown into the M2, right? Producing 410 horsepower, 550 Newton meters of torque. The M2 previously, um, previously the M2 had the N55 engine. Now you can think of that as uh, that's the same engine that they used in the F10 535i and the uh, F30 335i. Okay, so that was essentially just an upgrade of the the regular BMW 35i engine. So this one here, this is a proper purebred M engine, and the difference in outputs between this and the old N55 was, uh, you, this one gets 40 horsepower more, 85 newton meters extra. Yep. So also, uh, for the benefit of handling, they've also added this, uh, this carbon fiber strut bar here, all right, which I believe is also put here just as much for aesthetic purposes as well as for uh, dynamic uh, improvements. But you do see that the bar is, uh, is secured onto the front suspension top mount as well as the as the front cross member here so yeah it's it's uh it's it, it holds the the front chassis at four different points okay let me close the bonnet and explore the rest of the car now aesthetically aesthetically the most significant changes to the m2 competition happens all at the front uh these headlights they were already uh, updated with the previous M2 LCI, but I think they probably added this uh, the the smoke effect here. Okay, then uh, they have also changed the kidney grill. This brings the M2's kidney grill more in line with uh, with current generation BMW design language, where they have brought the two kidney grills back together. All right. Uh, they have also refined these elements here, so they have made these all all these bits here a bit more edgy. Right, uh, and also added this, this, uh, these features here as well. So the the bumper gets more detail, and BMW also claims that this uh, this reworked bumper details also aid with uh, improved engine cooling. Okay, so um, here these fins here were already there previously. These are cosmetic rather than functional. And you can see here 19 inch wheels wrapped with Michelin Pilot Sport 4S. All right, uh, and look at those massive bricks inside those wheels. Okay, uh, they have also changed the side mirrors. Now you get the M3, M4 side mirrors. Previously, this, the side mirrors of the M2 was the same as the regular 2 series. You get keyless entry here. Okay, uh, and of course you see the bodywork of the M2 is unique. I mean, it was it's the same as before, but still, just to highlight, this is a unique. Fa these panels are unique to the M2 over the regular 2 Series Coupe. It bulges up. The fender bulges out to accommodate a wider axle track, and you can see the the, the lights here. Okay, these are the standard 2 Series tail lights, but you can see how the, the how this depression here emphasizes the, the the flaring of the arches okay uh, no visible changes to the rear bumpers but the muffler is new the exhaust muffler is new 
and uh, you can see that they denote this variant by calling by putting the uh, black badging all right on the m2 now one thing to note about the m2 competition is that it replaces uh, in the global hierarchy it replaces the standard m2 so now bmw only sells uh, the m2 competition well the only the, the m on, bmw only sells the m2 as the m2 competition okay that's it nothing no no other option uh let me just look inside so if you have come from the latest g35 series or the g23 series this now looks like a previous gen bmw uh cabin if i may say but uh they have of course put in the new black panel instrument cluster so it still has that two physical physical uh, rings here no but inside there actually you can see the physical needles as well so let me just switch on the ignition okay yeah so you can see this is the in the illuminated instrument cluster uh, they have dressed it up to make it look like a digital instrument cluster but these are all actual analog dials this part of it this is an LCD screen but these are actually uh, uh, analog dials but contained within within this uh, this tiny little cell here okay the i drive uh, this is a, this is a, a, a more recent generation i drive but not as updated as you would as the one you would find in the in the 3 series or the 5 series all right but still you get you, it's a it's a decently responsive screen and I think iDrive really, the, the screen here really needs no introduction. Huh? So come down here, this is a familiar panel. You see this in the 2 Series. I think this one, the F30 also used the same panel as well. Nothing new here. Um, the quality of these switches, they are okay, but it uh, doesn't, doesn't feel of the same grade as the more recent G30s, G12s generation. Okay, and if you come down here, nice. This is this this pad here is rubberized for you to put things, and if you put open this as well, you can see these deep cup holders. This really feels like previous gen BMW architecture, and these are this this are actual carbon weave trim. You can see it's not a smooth smooth surface. You can touch physically touch the weaving the weaving patterns here. So this is the uh, the controller of the seven speed D, uh, DCT. Right, and uh, I was told that uh, if you would, if you choose to order B the M2 competition in manual transmission, BMW will entertain your request. Okay, uh, I'm not sure what what's the price differences, but I'm I was told they will lie on you. So this control, this is the drive mode controls. You can control the engine engine mapping here. Let me just try and switch this on. Okay. This controls your engines, uh, program engine mapping. This controls your chassis behavior, your steering. Okay, and this controls the the gear shift, the gear shift uh, mapping. The iDrive control here, so you can see the carbon fiber weave pattern continues along the center console here. So open here. Uh, once again, previous generation BMW key for decently sized compartment here. You've got a USB port in there as well. Let's hop to the back. Before that, let me, I'll just set the, uh, the seat here to my driving position and then I'll hop over to the back. Okay. All right. So I got this in my driving position. Okay, just to see there's no heads up display for this variant. Oh, you do get a Harman Kardon audio with the M2 competition now and I'll sit inside here so with the driver's seat adjusted to my sitting position <laughs> leg room is not bad way right? okay uh, don't talk much about thigh support nah. and let me just show you let me just show you this way uh, head room of course so so but they have so you see here uh, they have tried to give this indentation to the roof just to free up that little bit more 
a headroom for the rear passengers. Certainly, it doesn't feel cramped in here, to be honest. But this is a strict four-seater, so this space here is uh, is converted to become a storage tray. No center arm rest here. Uh, you do have isofix mounts, and I think looking at the available space to me here, this space really is big enough to fit your child seat, but. It's just that if you use this space for real facing installation, hmm, might be tricky to mount your baby. Okay, but yeah, certainly um, for a coupe, I, I absolutely cannot complain about this, the, the amount of available space in here. Okay, uh, the tie the support is, is, uh, is, is a bit limited uh, to be honest, but seriously, in the context of this segment, nothing to complain about. So let me just head down, open the luggage room. Okay, and so you see this boot is actually decently big, right? It is, I think, not much smaller than what you get in a 3 Series. And also you get split folding rear seats. You get split folding rear seats. Let me just, so you've got the seats folded down and uh, so the floor is slanted, the, the loading floor is slanted but it is uh, seamless it's well connected so you can put mount your uh, bulky items here without them rocking about so that's good yeah okay all right guys so there you have it this is the uh, new bmw m2 competition uh yeah this is this this car is going to be a future classic a future collectible and uh, you would want to, if you can afford it, you would want to get one of these. Actually, honestly, even if you don't go for this M2 competition, you buy the now, this, the previous pre-updated uh, M, regular M2, you are also getting a very, what, you, what will be a very collectible, very sought after car. Think about it, right? This small compact package, three liter inline six engine, rear wheel drive, um, mechanical handbrake many many people say that this car is the spiritual successor to uh, classic grades like the BMW 202 Turbo the uh, E30 M3 and yeah it this is a, a car that is uh, that is I, I've, I've not driven this, this the M2 competition yet but I've driven the previous uh, the pre uh, the, the previous M2 and I felt that you know it is a car that is very it has it's very edgy very alive kind of feel okay whereas if you jump from this to an m3 m4 the m3 m4 feels you know more refined more matured and sometimes a little bit more crazy in the edges but this car just has a bit more fun to it and when you look at also the other thing that bmw is developing their next generation you know one series on a front wheel drive platform you really do not know what does the future hold for the M2? Will there even be another M2 coming up in the future? That is something that we can't answer at this stage. So get this uh, future classic now while you still can.